Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Andrew, Hello. how you doing? I'm very good, thanks. How are both of you? Great. Really well, awesome. thank you. Well, you know, I'm going to start with the biggest thing I'm curious about. You know, you both had worked on Ready or Not, and obviously you worked with the director then, and then you moved on to Scream, and now Scream 6. So I'm curious, what was that working relationship like as you moved through from one film to the next and now to Scream 6? Because I'm sure it must make some things a lot easier. It really does. I, yeah. I mean, we we the five of us have a have a text chain and it's just constantly going and like i remember the first time i met matt tyler and chad of radio silence um i had co-written ready or not with my friend ryan ryan murphy um not the ryan murphy of american horror story and all of those shows but a uh, different ryan murphy um and uh so the first time we met was at uh, trip vincent's office uh on a story meeting for that after we'd sold it to searchlight and I knew within probably five to 10 minutes, like, I, I want to work with these guys for the rest of my career. We just clearly shared a brain. Yeah. The way that they brought Ready or Not to life, it was like they had just taken a tour through my and Ryan's brains and plucked out these images. It couldn't, have, it was just uncanny. Like, yeah. it, it was like, oh, wow, this is like a, a creative family that is forming. And again, if I only ever worked with them as directors for the rest of my career, I'd be happy. I think they're they're all geniuses and they're wonderful guys. They're actually good people. And when you find really good people in this business, you cling to them for dear life. And, you know, Jamie, you know, he's on the fence, but Matt and Tyler and Chad, I mean, yeah. they're, they're wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to disagree <laughs> with the guy. Not a fan of those dudes. Um, <laughs> not at all. I think. No, it's, the, it's, it's, I agree with everything guys said. They're amazing. We're all super close friends. And, and one of the reasons, you know, I was a producer on, I'm the producer on the screen movies too. One of the reasons we brought them in on screen five was we, I wanted someone I'd worked with before who we trusted, who we knew could do this, loved this world as much as we did and felt we could, they, they could pull it off. And they've been amazing. Well, I have to say, before I do anything else, Ready or Not is still one of my favorite things in so long. And so, oh, you know, you. I love what I've obviously seen you guys kind of bring over concepts through these things. So it's it's fantastic to see where it's gone. I would I still dream of an idea of a Ready or Not sequel if that ever, you know, it, it's a weird concept, maybe, but. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that myself. I, you Thank know, you. I, yeah. We, yeah, I, we, we love Ready or Not as well. It's just such a such a unique little movie, and it's so odd and and weird. And like the I, the the fact that everyone saw the same vision for that, from you know the producers to the directors to the studio and the marketing and and the cast, like it, it's it's a really special movie for me too. So that's really nice to hear. Well, that speaking of cast, that brings me exactly to my next thought is. Did you know writing this that you were going to have certain cast members like for anything? Were you writing to these actors or was it really just about the characters first then go from there? I mean, I think for this, it was definitely we knew we were bringing back the core four. Like we knew we really and and it, one of the things that's fun about a sequel is, you know, the rhythms of the actors, you know, that, you know, it's it's. You know, the the Mason Gooding in, in Scream 6, we knew that we could give him the romance with Tara because we'd seen how wonderful he was in Scream 5. We knew how to write for Mindy in a very specific way because we'd seen what Jasmine could do. So that is sort of a, a lovely thing. And then for the other actors, you know, it was sort of cast the best people you can. We did really want Samara for the opening because of Ready or Not. That was something that we all kind of talked about. Wouldn't it be great if, if this could be her? Um, and, um, uh, and so we're thrilled that that worked out and she's incredible. On the flip side, when you were doing the previous scream, were you thinking, okay, I'm setting this up for the future at all or, or uh, not at all? Only in like no. really broad strokes. I mean, it, we, we never talk about the next one when we're working on the current one. And we were so really. we were, we weren't like planning a trilogy or planning a sequel or planning, nine movies or whatever it is but um we we did in the very broadest terms say what the franchise would need if it were to continue is a passing of the torch to a younger generation and so that was really the extent of it, it was just like yeah. we want to introduce a new cast that can you know carry it forward uh if the fifth one is successful like if we're lucky enough to have a a, a good movie and a successful movie and someone wants to make another one like let's give them a path to that 
so that was sort of you know just in, in the broadest possible terms but not really i mean beyond that we just we, we just kind of focused on five like as fans what if this is the last screen movie ever to be made what would we want to see and then we put that on the page um and then we got lucky you know like it, it, it did well and so we got to do another one and the same deal there it was like all right let's let's write to an ending and uh and and that's it yeah we want each one of the movies to really feel like a full meal and not a commercial for a movie that has yet to be made you know it's and, and, <laughs> right. and it's not by the way that's not that there's a that's a bad version of storytelling but we sort of go back to sort of wes and kevin when they made the originals is they were just trying to make the best movie they could every time and give you a full meal and a great story and not worry about setting stuff up for future so i, I think we're almost a little i'm a little superstitious about it all my, we're like no 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 yeah. this is we're, we're right yeah. here stay here you know yeah leave it all in the field yep leave it all in the field well, and good writing lends itself to being a chapter that you then can reference in the future when you do write the next thing. So it, that also makes a lot of sense for good writing. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, the other thing is, I'm curious, did you have anything you wrote that you were like, I can't wait to see how this turns out? Were there, I'm, I'm sure there must be a few things, uh, obviously, when you're writing something like this, but was there one thing in particular that stood out? I think, yeah, I mean, literally with Radio Silence, with Matt and Tyler and, and Chad, it's it's pretty much everything. Yeah. It's, I just can't wait to see what they do with this. And the same thing with the cast is I just can't wait to see these actors that we, you know, now known for a couple of years deliver these scenes, you know, whether it's action and horror or, or dialogue and comedy or whatever it is. But for me, I think it was the subway. I think that was the one I was I was just like. I cannot wait to see the sequence. I can't wait to see how they shoot it. I can't wait to see how the actors perform it. Um, and it, you know, for me at least, it did not disappoint. It was just, it was well beyond what I had in my head. Uh, so just as a fan and as a viewer, I was, I was really thrilled with how that turned out. That was going to be my answer too. And then the other thing I will say is, I was really excited. I knew they would shoot it well. I was really excited to see Tony Revolori take off the the mask at the beginning with an audience that and, and seeing an audience react. And I was like. You, you know, mail me to a year and a half from now when I get to to watch that. And it didn't disappoint with a full theater. You know, everyone was sort of like, what are we doing? Um, yeah. so that was exciting. I I think this is one of those things that I know we're talking about, you know, home video release and things. But it's one of those things that I can't wait for this film to come back to a theater at some point for someone yeah. to be like, oh, my God, I missed it the first time. I'm finally seeing it. It's a, great, awesome. it's a great crowd movie, which was, you know, yeah, we yeah, always yeah. were, you know, we grew up, you know, in the, in the era of sort of movie theaters. And so we, uh, it's wonderful if people want to watch it at home and see it at home or see, but like the more people you can get in a room with you, if you haven't seen it yet, I think the better the experience is. Well, thank you guys so much. I think it's fantastic. I, I think it'll be a big hit this Halloween, I'm sure. Oh, I hope oh, so. so <laughs> yeah, thank you. Have a great day. Take care, Andrew. You too. 